ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நமஹா In the series of Saints of India, this soul wished to share with you in this episode number 5, the life of Sant Tulasi Das. The content is a compilation of information available on the date of publication in the following portals. Any addition or deletion may graciously be condoned. The portals are wikipedia.com, speakingtree.in, ramcharitamanas.org, hindujagrati.org and dlshq.org. Sant Tulasi Das Sant Tulasi Das was born in Rajpur in current day Uttar Pradesh in 1532 CE. As I had seen earlier, the saints when born itself reflect their life. Sant Tulasi Das was not an exception. When born, he looked like a five-year-old child with full-grown teeth after being in his mother's womb for 12 months. Unlike other babies who cry when stepping into the world, this baby, later to be Tulasi Das, started chanting Ram Ram. A celestial voice was heard then which named the newborn as Rambola. Rambola's parents were Hulsi and Atma Ram Dube. People say that Rambola was born a Saryuparin Brahman. Rambola was four years old when his father expired. Little is known about his mother thereafter. In Kavitavali and Vinaya Patrika, Sant Tulasi Das mentions how his parents abandoned him. Some biographers mention that his mother's servant named Chuniya took care of him for the next five and a half years before she died. Seeing Rambola orphan, Narhari Das, a Vaishnava ascetic, took him with him and rechristened him as Tulsi Das and that he became an ascetic thenceforth. The other school of thought mentions about his marriage with Ratnavali about whom he was very passionate. One day, without any information to Rambola, she went to her father's place. It is believed that Rambola couldn't withstand a moment's separation from his wife, swam across the river Remuna to reach his father-in-law's house to see his wife. Such was his passion towards his wife. Ratnavali was embarrassed at the behavior of her husband and said, If you would have had 50% of this passion towards Lord Ram, you would have crossed the ocean of samsara. The words hit him like a bolt as well as triggered a spark in him. He quit being a grahastha and took to sannyasan the very moment, say some biographers. Post becoming an ascetic, he wandered in search of Lord Ram. Every day, after his morning ablutions, Tulsi Das used to pour the remaining water from the container at the root of a tree. A spirit, which was living in the tree, was pleased by his action. It appeared before him and suggested that Tulsi Das ask a boon. Tulsi Das, in all earnestness, requested the spirit lead him to Sri Ram. For this, the spirit expressed its inability but opined that Tulsi Das should meet Hanuman. It also added that Hanuman comes in the form of a leper to a temple as the first person to listen to Ramayan. Post the Ramayan, he leaves as the last person. The spirit said, go meet him and he will lead you to Sri Ram. Without wasting a moment, Tulsi Das rushed to the temple as was told by the spirit. After Ramayan, Anuman was the last person left besides Tulsi Das. Anuman started walking towards the jungle. Tulsi Das followed him. As Anuman was to enter into the jungle, Tulsi Das prostrated to him telling him that he has identified him and knew who he was. He said, O Lord Anuman, please show me the way to have the darshan of Sri Ram. For this, 
Hanuman humbly directed Tulsi Das to head to Chitrakoot where he said he will be able to meet his lord on way to Chitrakoot hill Tulsi Das came across two young men brilliant shiny he passed through them as would any other normal person would do later when Hanuman inquired if Tulsi Das met Lord Sri Ram he said in the negative then Hanuman informed him that the two young men with brilliance were in fact Ram and Lakshmana Tulsi Das felt so bad about his ignorance he felt wounded in not having recognized his lord when he came across him in close quarters Hanuman realizing Tulsi Das predicament assured him that Lord Sri Ram will appear the next day too Tulsi Das spent a sleepless night he was eagerly waiting for dawn and he started doing his morning chores he was grinding sandalwood paste for his tiller a small boy appeared in front of him and asked for some sandal paste anuman was observing this from outside and realized what was happening and the ignorance of tulsi das he started singing a doha which translates to many saints gathered up on the hill called chitrakoot while tulsi das was making paste of chandan lord sri ram applies the tilak on hearing this tulsi das immediately realized who has come in front of him in the form of a little boy with lot of love and affection he was staring at the boy with devotion flooding he applied chandan to the boy and enjoyed every moment of his presence thus he met lord sri ram in chitrakoot many believe that sant tulsi das is valmiki reincarnated there is a reason behind it too valmiki was told by hanuman to be reborn and write ramayan again tulsi das not only recreated valmiki ramayan as ramcharita manas but also wrote hanuman chalisa tulsi das wrote ramcharita manas in the local tongue avadi for which there were protests among the people telling that the effectiveness of sanskrit will not be there the sanskrit scholars religious scholars and priests were those who protested against ramcharita manas their contention was that the effectiveness of sanskrit will not be there when written in avadi tulsi das felt very humiliated and prayed to kashi vishwanath to get him out of this rut he started penance in varanasi seeing his condition lord sri ram advised him to keep the book ramcharita manas below a pile of sanskrit editions of ramayan his book was right at the bottom and the rest were kept on top of it in the sanctum sanctorum of kashi vishwanath temple the temple doors were closed and locked the next day morning when they opened the temple everyone was surprised to see that the book which they had kept right at the bottom was right on top with the words satyam shivam sundaram inscribed in sanskrit on top of it which translates to literally truth auspiciousness and beauty it is believed that none other than lord shiva had inscribed these three words to authenticate his work the local sanskrit scholars were not satisfied despite this ratification they sent thieves to tulsi das's house to steal the book when these thieves entered the house they saw tulsi das deep in sleep but the book was being guarded by two handsome youth with bow and arrow in their hand whichever direction these thieves went they encountered these young men fearing that they might be caught or identified they fled the scene next day they approached tulsi das inquiring who the young men were on hearing this tulsi das was in tears overwhelmed both with joy and sorrow joy because 
Lord Sri Ram himself with Lakshmana had guarded the works and sorrow because he missed an opportunity to have darshan of them. He sent the manuscripts to his friend Rai Thodar Mal who was the then finance minister in Agbo's court and he donated all the money. Legend says that Sulsi Das was attributed with the power of working miracles. In one such miracle, he brought back to life a dead Brahman. When the body of the Brahman was being taken for cremation, his widow requested Tulasi Das to bless her as Saubhakyavati and so did Tulsi Das. When he blessed her, she said that her husband is dead and that his words cannot be true. On hearing this, Tulsi Das said that once words have gone through his lips, they shall be truth only. He asked everyone to close your eyes and chant the name of Sri Ram. When everyone followed his order and on completion they saw the dead Brahmin alive. Tulsi Das believed and proved that chanting the name of Lord Sri Ram is the only way for salvation. Hearing that Tulsi Das was attributed with the power of miracles, the then Mughal Emperor Akbar asked him to appear in his court. Tulsi Das refused to move out of Varnasi and hence he would not appear before the Emperor. He was then taken to the court of Akbar forcibly. Akbar asked Tulsi Das to do miracles if he desired to go back to Varnasi. Tulsi Das very humbly presented himself to the Emperor and told him that he knew no miracles but only the name of his Lord Sri Ram. Akbar did not believe this. He told Tulsi Das that he will not free him till he did a miracle. When Tulsi Das didn't perform any, he was put in a solitary cell. It is told that during this time in jail, the Tulsi Das wrote Anuman Chalisa. On the 40th day of his imprisonment, huge monkeys invaded the capital of Akbar and also entered the court of Akbar. Akbar realized that this is the work of the Lord to free San Tulsi Das and that Tulsi Das was no normal human. He came and fell at the feet of Tulsi Das begging for mercy and apologized for his wrongdoing. The monkeys immediately left the place and disappeared. Tulsi Das thanked Lord Anuman for this mercy. It would be surprising to know how without any modern gadgets did Sant Tulsi Das measure the distance between the earth and the sun. In Hanuman Chalisa, he mentions Yuggu Sahasra Yojana Parbhano Lilio Tahi Madhufalu Jano where one yug is equal to 12,000 years. One Sahasra is equal to 1,000. One Yojan is 8 miles. So, yug times Sahasra times Yojan is equal to 12,000 into 1,000 into 8 that's 9 crores 60 lakhs. As we know, 1 mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. So, 9 crores 60 lakhs times 1.6 is equal to 153 crores 60 lakhs. 153 crores 60 lakh kilometers, which is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. This has been ratified by NASA with surprise. Tulsi Das returned back to Varnasi and continued with his work till his death in July 1623 CE, both in Avadi and Braja. We should feel blessed to have been born in the soil where these sons and Mahans have lived. Jai Shri Ram. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Saints of India. If you'd like to support this series, please consider contributing at patreon.com. The link for the same is given in the description. Shri Gurubhyo Namaha.